back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on Wake Up Call DT.com, your one stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Hope everybody's having themselves a tremendous Thursday. There is no Thursday night games for us here tonight, which is crazy. No Thursday night games that are happening here. There's going to be Saturday games, though. There's two games on Saturday, December 22nd. Redskins at the Titans on at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and the Ravens at the Chargers at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, back-to-back weeks with some Saturday games for you here. We're inside the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. It is your home to watch all the games and your home to get great food, great entertainment, and it's a relaxed atmosphere. Folks, if you're not the typical bar goer, the Wildcat's the place for you. If you like to go out to the bar, the Wildcat's the place for you. If you have kids, the Wildcat's the place for you. If you're going on a date or going to hang out with your girls or your buddies, the Wildcat's the place for you. It is a place that can kind of chameleon itself to be a place for everyone. It's very welcoming, it's very comfortable, and it's very, to me, it's a peaceful way to go out and watch the game and enjoy yourself. A good community of people goes out to the Wildcat Sports Pub, and you can too on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. On top of that, the Penn and Trophy Center, which is now at its new location on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. That's 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. Go out and see them right by BJ's Wholesale Club, the Penn and Trophy Center, serving our community for over five decades of time, over 50 years of service to our community, and they can help you out today. If you need a trophy made, you need something customized, engraved, whatever it may be, if it's for work, your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your fiance, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, the employee of the month, your team, literally. Possibilities are endless when it comes to the pen and trophy. If you're out of town, go to penandtrophy.com. That's pen and and spelled out, so pen and A-N-D, Trophy.com, Penn and Trophy.com. And you can also go visit them on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. You can call them at 315 422 8797. With that being said, the man on the other side of the Fantasy Football Power Hours, Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. We've been doing this thing for years, and I cannot ask for a better person on the other side of this broadcast. So, with that being said, let's bring him into the show. Mike, how are we doing today? Awesome. How you doing? Doing very well. I, I heard that the rain is not is not a very peaceful down there. I know St. Augustine's getting it. You're getting it too. So, what's life like been down? You know, been what's life been like down there in Florida? I mean, I guess I hit it at the right time last uh, Sunday. I was only there Sunday into Monday. I was not even there 24 hours, but I heard that it's been raining for a while since then. Well, it usually rains, especially in the summertime, every afternoon here in Florida. If it doesn't, we'll will burn up and fly off the earth. But you, you, you ever see those big 10-gallon paint buckets? You know, you can get them at Home Depot where the paint comes in them even, those big, giant 10-gallon buckets? Yeah. Picture a million of those over your head all dumping at once. That's pretty much what's going on right now with some wind. So, yeah, not quite a hurricane, but it's raining pretty bad. There's some wind, but, uh, you know, we're hanging on here. It's, it's going to be a good day once this rain clears. Absolutely. And, and you know, what are you doing to prepare for the holiday season? Because the funny thing uh, to me is that, you know, I kind of forget the fact that, you know, Christmas is celebrated down in warmer weather climate places because I'm like, oh, they, they're not they're not doing lights. They're not hanging this up. They're not doing this, that and the other. And then I go down to St. Augustine and some of the most beautiful houses that I see in general are down in St. Augustine, all decorated and, and, and lit up. So, how do you celebrate for the holiday season? Do you have the tree? Do you do you put some lights outside? What's what's the holidays like at the uh, Safka household? Well, everything's probably the same as it is in your household, except I'm wearing shorts and flip flops. I'm usually wearing, you know, a t-shirt. I don't have, you know, winter jacket and gloves, and mittens and hats and galoshes and boots and all this stuff going on. I don't need it. Usually it's just, you know, real casual. It's just like, uh, you know, it's nonstop Jimmy Buffett. We're drinking cocktails that a half-cut coconuts and pineapples, you know, lounging by the pool, got some Christmas beach music going. 
and uh, just enjoying the holidays, much like you would there, except uh, no snow. I don't think anybody <laughs> listening in central and upstate New York likes you as a person right now, Mike Safka. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you. I think you. I think you've upset the the beautiful, wonderful people of my my backyard and my my neighborhood, so to speak. But that's okay. That's all right. All jokes aside, we're always happy to have Mike Sofka here with us of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football dot com and and a uh, great person. And you know, couldn't think of a better one to have here. So I'm thankful for that this holiday season, the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Before we get started with it, you know that whole notion of. Why is Josh Gordon when he could be a top 10, top 5, top 7 wide receiver in the NFL? How come he's not panning out in Cleveland? Why is it just not working in Cleveland? How come he always gets in trouble in Cleveland? Oh, well, the Patriots are going to take him. How do the Patriots end up with him? Oh, my God, he's so good. He could be a number one receiver. The Patriots are going to win a Super Bowl. They're going to have this wide receiver that Cleveland let go and nobody else picked up. Well, now that story is that Josh Gordon, the, the trouble didn't stop in Cleveland, sadly, and he is deciding to leave football to focus on his mental health this morning. The news came out during my show. Your thoughts on this, Mike? I feel terrible for Josh Gordon. What your take is on, on Josh knowing that, I mean, he's obviously making a choice for himself, which is good, but this is, this is you know, kind of a sad thing in the sense of the fact that he has been, at times, uh, a football player that has a lot of upside and a lot of hope. And ultimately, it's just not going to pan out for him, it looks like. Yeah, you, you know, we've seen this before, you know, and it, it, it's it's kind of trying for, you know, as a fan, as a fantasy football player, you're like, dude, just suck it up, play a couple games. Well, there's a human side to this, you know, there's that, you know, we're all human, we all have our challenges and opportunities, and, you know, good for him if this is the best thing for Josh Gordon. Unfortunately, it's not the best thing for the people around him who, and I'm talking about his teammates you know he's kind of letting them down kind of letting the, the Patriots down but it is what it is I mean maybe he's going to be a better person and maybe a better NFL player you know when all this is is, is over with on the backside here it's just you know he's, he's on a journey and you know you, you can't really knock or discuss anybody's journey until you you've been on that journey or you're on that journey with that person so you know, I hope all is well with him. I hope it works out for him. But it is it is disappointing, to say the least, to have something like that coming up, um, not only for the Patriots, the NFL, for the fantasy players, and, and, and for Josh Gordon himself. But, uh, you know, God bless him for reaching out for help. And uh, I'm assuming he's going to get the help he needs and, and hopefully move on from there. Yeah, you know, the hope is is that things work out and that he finds some peace in his journey because it seems like this has been a long journey that's you know just keeps coming back to football being taken away from him or or him now taking football away from himself so you know my hopes for him is that he finds peace in 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 something positive something good because he needs it we all need it so i hope that i hope that he can find peace in being Josh Gordon and doesn't need to look for outside influence or outside help or outside stimuli so to speak to to live a happy and good life so my best to you josh and always hoping for you and praying for you buddy with that being said mike we're going to hop right into it every team is playing this week week 16 and that means we're going to start off with our saturday games always weird to have a saturday game but we do we have two of them redskins at the titans saturday at 4 30 p.m eastern time what do you got for this yeah, you know, I think the Titans are red hot right now. You can't argue with, with, with what they've been able to find in, in the running game with Derrick Henry. He's been explosive. He's been on fire. He's been putting up gaudy numbers. Uh, I got to think you go with the hot hand here. I'm going to go with the hot hand and the Titans to win this game. But the number one thing I see is that the that the Titans are going to ride behind the hot hand of Derrick Henry. He's been racking up yards, touchdowns. He's been making it look like he's he's a high school player playing against junior high guys, not only based on his size, but his ability and what they've been able to do for him. They finally figured it out. They got the formula. I know early in the year it was a lot of Deion Lewis. It was a lot of game plan. It was a little bit different. And, you know, there wasn't as many opportunities 
opportunities or touches. And once he got going, I mean, you can't argue with the running game. You have to run the ball in the NFL if you want to be successful. And, you know, even though it's a pass-oriented game now, and even though it's more passing a lot of times than running, you know, the running back is important. And that, that hides other deficiencies in your team when you're able to control the ball, control the clock. So Derrick Henry's number 15 running back on my ranking this week. You know, if I'm looking for a receiver from Tennessee, well, maybe not so much. Maybe a Corey Davis as a, as a wide receiver at three. Uh, looking for a tight end maybe from, from Tennessee, well, not so much. Maybe an Anthony Fersker if, if I'm desperate. But, I, you know, I don't think that uh, a Luke Stalker is going to help you. I don't think any of those guys are going to help you. Quarterback-wise, Marcus Mariota, He's putting up some great numbers, but he's pedestrian at best, comparatively speaking, to some other options you may have. He's the number 24 quarterback on my rankings. And on the other side of the ball, it's just a lot worse. It really is. Uh, you know, the quarterback situation is is pretty bad for Washington. I, I, I don't envy Josh Johnson, although they did put up a W, and although he did look okay. You know, put it in perspective, this is a guy who was in his living room playing with his kids, and then the phone call came. You know, he was literally on the street, and then the next week he's starting an NFL game. So it's pretty crazy the way that whole thing happened. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Adrian Peterson is going to be the solid guy, but he's no more than a running back three for me this week at number 32 on my rankings. And, you know, as far as wide receivers go, because of the quarterback issues, I'm not sure – you can count on a wide receiver. The only guy I think I can count on is a Vernon Davis at tight end going in for Jordan Reed who went out uh, number 11 on my rankings this week. So, again, for the record, I'm going to go with the Titans to win this game. Yeah, you know, I, I think the Titans definitely are a, a hot team. They're a team that has a lot to – you know, they, they have – they're that team that the, that the Jaguars open the door to, right? You know, the Jaguars let them have some life. They let them feel a little bit good about themselves and whatnot. But ultimately, the Titans, you know, they blew that door open in week number three. And it wasn't just that they defeated the team that they're used to defeating more often than not, which is the Jaguars. But it's that they got to a point where, you know, overall this team is looking good. This team has life in this moment in time. And, and I give them a lot of credit. I really do. The Tennessee Titans – are a thorn in the side of the Jaguars that I know all too well of covering the team, but ultimately they've been so much more than that. And, you know, they're still in the race right now. They're still in the hunt right now. They still have the opportunity right now. The AFC South has not been decided between the Titans, the Colts, and the Texans. So, you know, I think the Titans are a very dangerous team. This is a tough game for me to pick. You know, I do want to say that the Redskins are, you know, that they have some strength. They have some uh, ability, but... You know, they played a really ugly game against the Jaguars who just couldn't put together 60 minutes. And so, you know, Josh Johnson going up against the Titans in Tennessee, having to face Derrick Henry, you know, this this Redskins defense and whatnot. You know, Jacksonville threw for 57 yards with Cody Kessler, and they almost won this game. So I think the Titans are more than a step above the Jaguars, so I'm going to pick the Titans to win. As far as who to play in this game, Adrian Peterson and Chris Thompson are worth your plays. In my opinion, <clears throat> you know, I, I would say uh, Jeremy Sprinkle is, you know, if you need a little sprinkle of some stuff, pun intended, you need a little sprinkle, Christmas cookies, a little, little sprinkle, you can look at somebody like Jeremy Sprinkle if you have to dig really, really deep. And there's a lot of IR and there's a lot of injuries and there's not a lot left out there. He's not a bad play for you, but, you know, I think that it lies, the fantasy life lies in Adrian Peterson and then Chris Thompson. As far as Tennessee's side goes, who would have thunk that Derrick Henry would wake the heck up? You know, he's he was supposed to be the guy, then he was sharing it with DeMarco Murray, then he was sharing it with Deion Lewis, and he was sharing it with this guy and sharing it with that guy. Well, maybe Derrick Henry can finally be that guy for the long haul. He's worth the play in this game. I don't really like anybody else on Tennessee to lean on in this matchup. Next one up on Saturday as well, Saturday night, is the Ravens at the Chargers, Mike. What do you have for this? Well, Melvin Gordon's been dinged up with the MCL sprain, but it looks like he's finally going to be able to make it back. You know, it looks like, uh, you know, Austin Eckler is not going to make the game possibly. He's still in a concussion protocol, clear to practice, but not practice, but still uh, obviously with the effects from the concussion. Uh, Justin Jackson, I don't think you can count on. Look, I, it, it looks like Melvin Gordon's going to play in this game. I don't think he's going to be the top running back threat in the league, but he still warrants RB1 
one consideration. Number eight running back on my ranking this week. You know, and if you look on the other side of the ball, you see all the success that the Ravens have been having running the ball. A lot of that, though, has been Lamar Jackson running the ball. Gus Edwards, a flex player at best for you this week for the Ravens. And at quarterback, both of these guys are ranked interchangeably almost at 16 and 17 on my ranking this week. You know, if you if you picked up Lamar Jackson, I don't know if you're riding him or not. I mean, this is championship week. There is no tomorrow. It's do or die. We have to do it now or don't do it. You know, most leagues have their championship this week, so Lamar Jackson's probably going to get you about 100 on the ground, maybe 100 in the air, maybe a touchdown. Uh, you, you know, and Phillip Rivers is probably going to get a couple touchdowns, maybe a couple hundred yards in the air, virtually nothing on the ground. So basically they're the same guy, just in different categories. The Baltimore defense is stellar. That's what's carried them. That in the recent uh, surprise running game that they've been able to accomplish with Lamar Jackson, you know, at, at the helm there. I don't think we're going to see Joe Flacco, but you never know if there's an injury or something because Lamar Jackson doesn't put himself out there. And when you're running 17, 18 times a game, that's going to catch up with you in the, in the NFL. You know, receiver-wise, Keenan Allen was out last week. He left the game early uh, due to a hip injury. Looks like he's going to make it back. Number 17 wide receiver on my rankings this week. Uh, the Williams, uh, Mike Williams and Tyler Williams, not so much. Maybe a flex when you consider that. And the Baltimore receivers, I don't know if I can count on any of them. Even as a flex, John Brown, I, I just I don't see them making a lot of headway passing the ball with Lamar Jackson at the helm, especially up against a, a real tough Chargers defense. And tight end wise, there's a bunch of unmentionables and no names on both sides of the ball for most people. While you know, I, I happen to know you know of a Max Williams and a Mark Andrews and a Hayden Hurst. I don't think you can start any one of those guys, especially this week. And you know, the same thing on the other side of the ball. I'm not sure you could start Antonio Gates, who comes in number 25 on my ranking this week. So I'm going to go with the home team here. I know the char- I know the Chargers have been hot as of late, and you know the, the Ravens need to win bad, but they're not. They won't be out. I don't think if they don't win here, they're still alive. So I, the, the Chargers are playing really well. I have to go with the Chargers at home here. Yeah, I think I think that you know this is definitely going to be one of those good games and, and one of those uh, games that could swing either way for for the Chargers or for the Ravens. You know, I made the statement going into the season that Lamar Jackson would eventually be the starter this season. I thought that he should maybe start right away so that they could get into his offense and implement his offense with all the new weapons that they had on the team. They didn't end up doing that, but ultimately. They went to him when Joe Flacco wasn't 100%. He's 4-1 and one as a starter, and the only thing that keeps him from being 5-0 and oh as a starter in the NFL, which, by the way, is the best of any of the rookie quarterbacks right now, 5-0 and oh as a starter, the only thing that kept him from getting to that point is an overtime loss to Kansas City. So he loses an OT to Kansas City. Some would say that the refs we're loving a little bit up on Kansas City in that game as well. So very close to being five and zero is four and one. So Lamar Jackson is no slouch, and in fantasy value, he's no slouch by any stretch of the imagination. Everybody wants to say he can't complete a lot of passes, but going fourteen to twenty three, there's a lot of quarterbacks that have better names to other people than Lamar Jackson that have those numbers and throw for a hundred something yards and have a touchdown and don't throw an interception. And those numbers were far better than Cody Kessler. So. You know, Lamar Jackson is definitely worth to play in fantasy because he's going to run for you and he's going to throw. Because of Lamar Jackson, Gus Edwards is worth to play for you as well if you can go find him out there somewhere. Willie Sneed, John Brown, Michael Crabtree are kind of interchangeable, but I do think Sneed is above the other two if you had to pick one to play. It's hard because the ball gets moved around, which is great for the Ravens, but tough for fantasy. I think Willie Sneed then... Crabtree and Brown are kind of the same, but I would put Snead out there if you had to choose amongst the three. And Ty Montgomery is definitely in the right offense right now when he's a flex guy kind of running all over the place, you know, being with Lamar Jackson and Gus Edwards, but he's not worth the play right now. So I would say Lamar, then Gus, and then a guy like Willie Snead, the fourth. On the other side of it for the Chadges, Phillip Rivers is worth the play. Melvin Gordon, if he's good to go, and at the most recent injury report, to just give you an update here really quick, on the Los Angeles Chargers. Melvin Gordon on this list is, well, he's actually not on the list anymore. It's just 
Austin Eckler, who did not practice this Wednesday with a neck injury. So we don't even have Melvin Gordon on the injury report right now, which is a good sign to see for those Charger fans that are out there. He's worth the play if you got him. Put him out there. Keenan Allen, Tyrell Williams, Mike Williams. Really, uh, it's it's Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Tyrell has been subpar this season. I, I think Mike is a safer bet because Keenan Allen's coming off of being injured, but either one of them you could throw out there. I think Keenan is, is maybe a high-end three, and I think that Mike Williams is maybe a low-end two. Keenan Allen's hip injury left him limited in practice this Wednesday. Outside of that, you know, this is a really tough game for me to pick, but, you know, I got to create some separation with Mike. I only got two weeks to try and sneak up to first place, so I'm going to pick the Ravens in this one. Bengals at the Browns, Mike. What do you have for this? Wow. You know, this is an interesting game for me because I'm looking at this, and you may have in your championship week, maybe you're in the championship with a Phillip Rivers at quarterback. Well, maybe you want to upgrade that quarterback this week to a Baker Mayfield. That's right. Baker Mayfield's still available in a bunch of leagues. He's the number 14 quarterback on my ranking going up against the semi-soft Cincinnati defense. They do have some pass rushing capability, but they're soft in the secondary and at linebacker right now. And I think that, you know, Baker Mayfield can scramble and overcome those things, and he is exciting to watch. So if you're ready to push the chips in the middle of the table, he is ranked a few notches higher than a Phillip Rivers. So, you know, at 14, you could do a lot worse. The other side of the ball, Jeff Driscoll, not so much. He does have the running capability, but, you know, don't don't forget, this is a Cincinnati team that's without A.J. Green as well. So, I think that, you know, while the Cleveland defense is a little bit on the soft side as well, I think that the guy who's going to have the most success in this game is going to be Baker Mayfield. Outside of Joe Mixon on the other side of the ball. Joe Mixon, oh, and then Nick Chubb. I got Nick Chubb checking in at number six for the Browns, and I got Joe Mixon checking in at number 13. So both of those guys are are guys that you're going to want to play, of course. You know, Joe Mixon's a solid guy. He's going to be buying for, you know, draft position next year, maybe in the top 10. So keep your eye on Joe Mixon. A lot of times if these guys finish strong, they're going to start out strong again next season. That's just what I found over the years. So, you know, looking at a Nick Chubb, yeah, definitely start him. Joe Mixon, definitely start him. And then on the receiver end, Tyler Boyd's been been awesome. Uh, you know, he stepped up as much as he could. But I, I, I don't think that he's a, a wide receiver one. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that, you know, any wide receivers on either one of these teams – Maybe a Jarvis Landry. I have him checking on number 21 on my list. But, you know, outside of that, maybe, you know, your your value is in tight end in this, in this game. C.J. Uzuma checking in at number eight on my rankings this week. And then on the other side of the ball, David Njoku at number 12. So that's the passing options there. But I don't think there's going to be a ton of passing options from the Cincinnati side, just the Cleveland side. A lot of running back points going to be racked up in this one. And I'm going to have to go ahead and take Cleveland in this game. Yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting game. Uh, you know, just, I mean, without A.J. Green and Jeff Dr- and Jeff Driscoll being there instead of Andy Dalton at quarterback, Cincinnati doesn't feel the way that they typically do. You know, the Browns are not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. They played in multiple overtime games this season. So they've definitely had a, they've had an opportunity. They've had multiple opportunities. I have a lot of respect for what Cleveland has put forward this year. You know, firing their coach in the middle. They're six, seven, and one. They're literally one game away from being snake eyes. So I, I give them I give them a hell of a lot of credit. They went zero sixteen. Like this is a team that wins no games, one game, two games, three games a season. They're six, seven, and one right now. Third in the AFC North. And, you know, they, they have that kind of striking distance feel to the top. You know, it's not like Pittsburgh ran away with anything, and it's not like Baltimore has either. So, you know, I think Cleveland's got a lot to offer, and I think going on the road at Denver and winning 17-16 to 16 says a lot about who they are. Denver has been the definition of an enigma. They have made absolutely positively no sense this season. They beat teams that they're, that they're not supposed to. They lose against teams that you would think that they would beat, or historically, like the Browns. And they don't, especially when they're at home. So, you know, Denver's in all types of trouble, but we'll talk about Denver in a little bit here for Monday night. Cleveland is on the other side of it. Cleveland has nothing to lose and everything to gain. So as far as who to play in this matchup on Cincinnati side, Joe Mixon, I would give him a shout in this. He's a flex guy for me. He's a wide re- uh, running back three. 
you know, maybe a low end too. Tyler Boyd, I am a fan of Tyler Boyd, but only as a flex because he has Jeff Driscoll. So there's really not a lot that makes me excited when I look at this, you know, this team. And, you know, because of where Cincinnati is at right now, you go to their most recent game where they defeated the Raiders, and you look at the fact that, okay, you know, Joe Mixon obviously got involved a lot. Tyler Boyd got involved. But that's really it. So those would be the two guys I would look to as flex. Maybe Joe, depending on how deep your your league is, maybe he's your running back too. On the other side of it for Cleveland, you know, uh, Baker Mayfield, I'd leave him off uh, of this one. I, I don't think – I mean, he's playing Cincinnati's defense. So, you know, if he can play two quarterbacks, if you can – you know, kind of flex out that, then I would look at playing him. But I think there's better options out there for you. This could be a good game for him, but I wouldn't rely on him to keep you in the playoffs. Nick Chubb, you obviously have to play in this matchup. Antonio Callaway is a sneaky guy to put in this one late in your fantasy season as a flex player. And, you know, Jarvis Landry might get a look, but I I think that Antonio Callaway could be that sneaky flex for you. And then David Njoku, if he's healthy enough to play, you know, he, he's a low-end one, a high-end two, probably more so a high-end two at tight end. He's been a poor man's David Njoku this season. So, you know, he hasn't been what I thought he would be, but he is still there in this offense. So, you know, to me, he's he's more of a tight end two, in my opinion. I am picking the Browns, though. Bucks at the Cowboys, Mike. What do you have for this? Yeah, the Bucks are still playing Jameis Winston, obviously, and you know, that's, that's who they have at quarterback. And if he gets hurt, he's going to be there next year. He's going to be on the hook. Or at least they're going to pay him. But if he doesn't, they're going to have some decisions to make. And this can be a pivotal game. Dallas' defense has been playing well, uh, you know, specifically at home. But I get Jameis Winston coming in as a middle-of-the-road quarterback, just slightly ahead of Lamar Jackson and Phillip Rivers at number 15 this week against Dallas. He's going to have to throw the ball. They're going to have to make something happen. You know, on the other side of the ball, Dak Prescott, I think Tampa secondary is still real weak, and I think Dak checks in because of the outstanding running game behind Ezekiel Elliott, who is number two on my running back rankings this week. Dak Prescott's going to have an opportunity to put up mid-range quarterback one numbers, and that's pretty huge for Dallas fans, and that's huge for Dallas this time of year. They need to keep winning. They need to keep rolling, and Dak Prescott's probably going to have a pretty good game checking in at number five on my rankings. And you know what? Peyton Barber hasn't been really getting it done. I'm not sure if if Jacquez Rogers or who's going to be the guy. It doesn't matter. You probably can't play a buck running back against Dallas. And on the other side of the ball, you got to play a Mike Evans. He's number 14 on my ranking. He's talented enough to be on the top of the list. But with the Buccaneer game, the only thing that keeps him ranked this high right now is the fact that they're probably going to be playing from behind and probably throwing the ball quite a bit. Well, they're going to need some support throwing the ball. They're probably going to get that from Adam Humphreys, who seems to be stepping up as of late. Jameis seems to like Adam Humphreys. Adam Humphreys, the number 18 ranked wide receiver on my rankings this week. And, you know, I, Cameron Bray, he's always looking for, Je- for Jameis. And Jameis is always looking for him, especially in the red zone. So especially being in a touchdown dominant league, Cameron Bray, number 13 tight end on my rankings. And Dallas... They don't really have that guy. They're, they're they're trying to force one of them on us. They're trying to force the ball to Blake Jarwin and Jeff Swain. They're trying to make something happen to Dalton Schultz, a uh, uh, Rico Gathers, and, and none of these guys are really carrying it to the next game and really making a player out of themselves, at least one that fantasy uh, football players can put their hang their hat on. So, and, and Dallas has finally got their quarter, their wide receiver, of course, and Amari Cooper. He's a number 11 wide receiver on my rankings this week, and he makes everybody around him better as well. You can count on a Cole Beasley maybe as a as a flex player. And, and, and like I said, this all starts with Ezekiel Elliott. If Ezekiel Elliott's catching a ball, if he's running the ball well, the lines run blocking well, because they don't pass block as well in Dallas, but they run block really well. And as long as Zeke gets off, they're going to have an outstanding day, all the Dallas fantasy players. So, I would say Dallas is going to win this game at home, and I would say that uh, the Bucks are all looking to next year and what they're going to do with Jameis. Yeah, and and I think honestly that you know Jameis is. It's funny how you know you look at a guy who's a top pick. You look at a guy who hasn't been there that long, and ultimately, I don't think he's the future of the team. I really don't. So you know, for me, I, I just it's kind of short lived. You know, everybody wants to talk about. 
in the state of Florida, Blake Bortles, and <clears throat> Blake doesn't make sense, and, you know, Blake <clears throat> shouldn't be the guy in Jacksonville anymore. <clears throat> but then there's Ryan Tannehill in Miami, <clears throat> and what has Ryan Tannehill done lately? And then there's Jameis Winston in Tampa, and what has Jameis Winston done lately except for be a consistent interception machine and a consistent problem off the field so Blake Bortles of those three guys looks like the best option which is kind of comedic with everybody wanting to make fun of Blake and that's the catchy thing to do but the reality of it all is Jameis Winston and Ryan Tannehill have been more unlikely to help you win games than Blake Bortles in the recent history so you know I'm not a big fan of Jameis obviously not going to tell you to put him out there in this game Uh, as far as running the ball I don't feel good about Anybody in Tampa, Peyton Barber's out there in a lot of free agency pools that I've seen, and uh, Jacquez Rogers, if they ever gave him the ball and let him be the starter, maybe he could be somebody someday, but they don't seem to trust in the guy who has been the only person with Doug Martin and Peyton Barber and Ronald Jones and everybody else they bring in the building. He's the only consistent one, yet he doesn't get consistent carries, which is a pain in the butt for fantasy owners that roll the dice on him because I believe he has earned it. So, nobody looks good Tampa running the ball. Mike Evans, he would be a guy to throw out there. Adam Humphreys, I would say, you know, maybe a wide receiver three. Cameron Braid is definitely worth the play in this because Jameis Winston does like throwing to his tight end when he's not throwing to the other team. The Dallas Cowboys in this matchup. Dak Prescott's not a bad one in this, but it might be reaching a little bit. He's a quarterback, too. Ezekiel Elliott is worth the play in the matchup. Obviously, Amari Cooper. Michael Gallup and Cole Beasley have gone down a little bit. Gallup would be a wide receiver for Beasley, also a wide receiver for, but watch his injury as he has not been. He is questionable to play in the game, and there's nobody at tight end for Dallas that I like. I'm going to go with the Cowboys in this one. Vikings at the Lions. Mike, what do you have for this? Yeah, this is usually a real interesting game, but I don't know if it's going to be interesting this week. I mean, the the Vikings are the team playing for something. They they clinch a playoff berth with a with a win. They need some outside help as well. So they're going to try to focus on the win. Of course, that's all they can control. And Kirk Cousins has been doing a pretty good job as of late and most of the year with consistency. Kirk Cousins, number eleven quarterback on my rankings this week, and Matt Stafford on the other side. Well, not so much. You know, Matt Stafford is a good quarterback. I can't blame it all on Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford is playing without a, a, his true starting running back. They traded away his top receiver. Now another top receiver is injured. Uh, they traded away his tight end. That tight end is flourishing somewhere else. It's just it's been a bad situation, one thing after another, for Matt Stafford and Detroit. Matt Stafford, number thirty quarterback on my ranking this week. And as far as running back, I just spoke of you know Carry On Johnson's out. I mean he's on IR for the rest of the year. He's missed like the past month. You know it's going to be a committee type approach with the you know Bear Blunt, Riddick, and Zenner. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. But I think for the most part. Detroit's just playing for their jobs, playing to get people on tape. There's going to be some young players playing in this game that we don't usually see for Detroit. And Detroit's got an interesting thing going, you know, with their new head coach. He's got to prove himself. He's building for next year at this point, so don't don't get confused there. But what you can't offer any confusion on is Dalvin Cook. I think they're going to concentrate on continuing to give him the ball. I think he's he's been getting stronger since he's been back. He's the number nine running back on my rankings this week. And Kenny Galladay has been the answer for Detroit. They're going to be behind. They're going to have to throw the ball. He's their number one option. And he's been playing pretty well for, for a guy that's usually in the three, you know, or in the slot. He's playing everywhere. So Kenny Galladay, number 15 receiver on my rankings, kind of playing that Mike Evans role on a bad team right now, but they're going to have to throw the ball to be successful. And he's going to be the, 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 the recipient of those targets. You know, Minnesota's got a couple of outstanding receivers. If these guys are on your team, you may be in the championship. And Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. Adam Thielen checking in at number 10 on my rankings this week. Stephon Diggs, number 13 on my wide receiver rankings. And then I'm not sure about any tight end from either team. The, you know, Kyle Rudolph, maybe he checks in at number 18 on my rankings this week. But as far as Minnesota, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I mean, uh, Detroit, I don't see a guy that's really jumping out at me tight end-wise. So I'm going to take Minnesota to win this game. And, again, Detroit, I think, is playing for next year in their job. So I'm comfortable in Minnesota. 
Yeah, I, I think Minnesota makes sense for me. I, I don't know what Matt Stafford's future is going to be like in Detroit. And our resident Detroit fan here in Central New York, Johnny, uh, you know, he doesn't even know what it's going to be like. And I'm sure he came in as a big time Stafford fan. And at the beginning of the season, I don't think he would say anything like this, but he's saying it now. So, you know, it's 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 definitely become a different world there. Matt Patricia, you know, it, it hasn't panned out so far with Matt Patricia. It hasn't panned out with getting rid of Golden Tate. It hasn't panned out with Matt Stafford and what Matt Stafford's supposed to be comparative to what he actually is right now. So we, we are where we are with the Lions. You would This is one of those trap games where you're like, there's no way in hell the Lions can win this game, and then watch him find out a way to win this game. But where it stands right now, I would imagine that that's not going to be the case and that we're going to be in a position right now where we're going to see you know the, this, uh, this, this situation kind of work out on the side of the Vikings. I think ultimately the Vikings will get the victory. I think Kirk Cousins is worth the play in the matchup. I think, you know, he's a low-end quarterback, one high-end, two. Delvin Cook, definitely worth it. Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Kyle Rudolph, <clears throat> your usual suspects for the Minnesota Vikings. <clears throat> as far as Detroit goes, you know, their best player is Kenny Galladay, and he's being hampered by an injury right now. Kenny Galladay is in a situation where he is questionable to play in this game currently with a chest injury. So just watch that. Look, Eric Blunt moves up the list, but does he really? Zach Zenner seems to be the guy. Zach Zenner is a sneaky running back that you can put not as your one and not necessarily as your two, maybe as your two, but they're playing Minnesota's defense, so he's more of a flex this week. Kenny Galladay is your best chance. Watch to make sure he can play. If he does play, then it's worth putting him out there. I just don't know how much they're going to get done against Minnesota so ultimately, the fantasy value is in Minnesota, and the game is in Minnesota's hands. I'm going with the Vikings. Giants at the Colts, my good sir. What do you have for this? Yeah, this is a, a game that you know obviously means a lot for the Colts, but not so much for the Giants. Again, Giants going to be playing for you know more so for their futures, more so for their contracts, more so for their jobs. Definitely taking the Colts in this one, and the Colts are led by a red hot Andrew Luck coming in number six on my rankings. Whereas Eli Manning, you know, the other side of the spectrum most of the year in the bottom half, number 22 on my rankings at Indianapolis this week. You know, Saquon Barkley's the man, he's the myth, he's already a legend in his rookie year, number four running back on my rankings. And, you know, PPR wise, standard wise, this is a guy who gets it done usually all the way around. So I like Saquon Barkley a lot. Uh, you know, on on the other side of the ball, though, I, I'm I'm not sure I can start a Marlon Mack above a guy like that. But you know, maybe you're looking for a running back three or a flex. That's a good spot for Mack. I think they're going to win handily. But I think you're going to spread the ball around, and one of the guys they're going to be spreading the ball around to is T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, number eight wide receiver on my ranking this week, and you know, I'm not sure on the other side of the ball if. If we're going to see an appearance of Odell, I, I, I really don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be uh, out for the game. If he does play, he's going to be a bottom end, two, maybe a wide receiver, three. They're going to try to nurse him along, use him sparingly. The guys who I'm really interested in in this game, though, are a, you know the tight end position. Tight end position, Eric Ebron has been doing a bang-up job all year, running it, throwing it, catching it, jet sweeping it. The guy's phenomenal. You wonder... What was going on in Detroit? Why wasn't he being used in these ways? He's the number three tight end on my ranking this week. And then, you know, on the other side of the ball, Evan Ingram, number seven tight end on my ranking. So there's some value there between those guys. I I wouldn't, uh, you know, flinch or blink at playing either one of those guys in daily this week either. So I think there's some opportunity for some points. I don't think there's a, a lot of opportunity with the Giants outside of Saquon Barkley and Evan Ingram, but I do think that the Indianapolis Colts are going to come away with the victory. Yeah, I got the Colts in this one winning this game. I'm not too concerned about the Colts in this. This would have been the Manning Bowl if Peyton Manning was still playing here, Peyton and Eli. So the question is Eli's future too. You know, Joe Flacco, Eli Manning. Jameis Winston. I mean, these are guys who have been starters. What are their few? Andy Dalton. What is Andy Dalton's future going to look like with him getting injured and not being able to be there for the team, you know, this season? So, 
you know, for, for what's been going on recently. So, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of question marks with names that you know. And the Eli Mannings and the Joe Flacco's, those are the weird ones to say, you know, are they going to be there after this type of feel to it is is really, you know, kind of crazy. But it is the reality of the game, and it's it's that, you know, what have you done for me lately? What is our future going to be, so to speak? Eric Ebron of the Colts did not practice on Wednesday with a quad injury. He's questionable. T.Y. Hilton's questionable with an ankle injury. Outside of that, nobody on Indy to be concerned about. And then for the Giants, you have Odell Beckham Jr. with a quad injury, didn't practice on Wednesday, and that's pretty much it for the Giants as they go. You know, in this matchup, Saquon Barkley is obviously your silver lining. If you're a Giants fan, he's your guy, and and he's the one that you kind of lean on here. Uh, Odell's trying to come back after being out last week. Just watch him. You know, you got to watch it, see where he's at, the injury report. On wakeupcalldt.com, if you go to the Fantasy Football tab, right underneath that tab, if you put your cursor over it, right underneath that tab is the NFL Injury Report. We'll have that updated for you this week. So watch on Odell Beckham Jr. <clears throat> if he can play, he's a low end two, high end three to me. He just hasn't been the receiver that you need him to be to win games. Saquon is your best bet on this. And Evan Ingram, if he's good enough to go, you, you can look at him and Give him a shout, but ultimately it's Saquon Barkley. On the other side for the Colts, I think Andrew Luck will have a good game. He's worth the play. I think Marlon Mack is worth the play. I think Naheem Hines is is, is a sneaky pick, but he's a running back four. So, you know, Marlon Mack, feel better with that. T.Y. Hilton, if he's good to go, put him out there. And Eric Ebron, if he can play, then, you know, obviously make him one of your tight ends that you put out there. If you have dual tight ends, perfect situation. If you have one, look at what you got. But I still think he's... He's a low-end tight end one. I think the Colts are going to have the majority of the fantasy value outside of Saquon, which is cut and paste for all the Giants games really this season for the most part, and I will be going with the Colts. Jaguars at the Dolphins, a game that doesn't matter for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but I guess it's bragging rights in the state of Florida. What do you have for this? Yeah, I don't think Tom Coughlin really cares about bragging rights. He's trying to right the ship here. Team's a wreck. You know, defense, undisciplined, penalties, stupid penalties, personal fouls, uh, defense not playing well, looking like they're giving up at times, not being able to tackle at all. You know, this is not good. And on the other side of the ball, Frank Gore just going on IR, a 35-year-old guy who's been running like he's 25 years old is just done for the year. So, you know, we're going to see a lot more Kalen Ballage, but you know, the bottom line is Jacksonville searching for what they're going to do next year. I, I don't think you can play a quarterback from Jacksonville. I don't think you can play a quarterback from Miami. Ryan Danny Hill, you know, it's probably number 25 ranked quarterback. Cody Castro is probably ranked number 29 on my ranking. Uh, you know, on the running back end, you're going to see a little bit of value in a Leonard Fournette, number 17 running back on my rankings this week, and maybe a Kenyon Drake coming in at number 23 on my rankings. And like I said, Kalen Ballage, maybe a flex play for you or, or a bottom end RB3, a surprise guy in fantasy, in daily fantasy, I should say. You know, receiver wise, there, there are some talented receivers in this game. The problem is, is for Jacksonville getting them the ball. They haven't been able to get him the ball with any consistency at all. The one guy who's been semi-consistent for Miami when he's on the field is Kenny Stills, but I don't see him as any more than an emergency flex checking in at 43 on my rankings this week. So I'm definitely staying away from all the receivers. I'm definitely staying away from tight ends here as well. I don't see any value there. So the one bright spot is, I think, Leonard Fournette. The other bright spot is we're going to have an answer or two maybe for what direction Jacksonville's heading in. But I got to take Miami, the home team. I'm taking them begrudgingly just because they're playing the Jaguars. But again, you know, Miami with the home team advantage, and, and I, I just think they're going to be able to get it done. I'm going to take Miami for the victory. Yeah, I'm going with Miami in, in this one as well. You know, there's there's really no question to me that I'm going to be picking Miami in this game. Uh, there are some injuries on Miami. Ryan Tannehill, ankle injuries left him questionable. He was limited in practice. Frank Gore, as you said, is on injured reserve. Danny Amendola has a knee injury. He's questionable. He hasn't done anything this season at the wide receiver position. For Jacksonville, there's 1,052 people on injured reserve, and we know that. We went through that in the early part of the show. 
And guess what? They had Barry Church, and they let him go. Ronnie Harrison goes out for the season, and Gerard Wilson is injured too. So they really don't have much of any safety, so that's great. DJ Chark hasn't shown up as a rookie this season coming out of LSU. He's got a quad injury. He's questionable. Josh Lambeau, the kicker, is questionable. So Kai Forbath probably potentially get another start, it looks like, if things uh, continue to go as Josh Lambeau's groin injury has left him not practicing on Wednesday. And with a couple games to go, does he really need to play, so to speak, is the question that you got to ask yourself. So for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who do you put out there? Leonard Fournette. I mean, he's still a low-end two, high-end three. Leonard Fournette is, you could see the 25-yard run that he broke out when I was in Jacksonville for that last home game against the Redskins. You could tell that he was laboring. You could tell that he was not going full go, that he was being dainty with his legs. And so, you know, that just kind of shows you that he's not going to get you much. He might get you something. David Williams is a sneaky play in this game because nobody's going to expect him. Nobody's going to think that he can. And he's playing Miami's defense. So, you know, in all honesty, David Williams is not a bad flex player for you. He did some good things in the game. You know, Leonard Fournette, like I said, he might get you 45, 50 yards. I don't know if he's going to break out for you. There's no receiver on Jacksonville I feel good about. And as long as Cody Kessler is the quarterback, and if you're playing him and you have any hope of winning a playoff game, you might as well just you might as well just punch your ticket in now and go home from work because it ain't going to happen. On the other side of it for the Miami Dolphins, Kenyon Drake, Kalen Balage, guys to look at in this game. You know, the positivity that they could both bring to it. I think they're both worth the play. I think they're low-end twos, high-end threes, but they're still worth it. Kenny Stills is a guy to look at in this. And Devontae Parker as a flex just because he's playing Jacksonville's defense. Outside of that, I don't see a ton of value. I just think Miami's going to get something out of it because they're playing Jacksonville. We're both picking the Dolphins. With that being said, we'll take a step aside for a fast break. We'll be back with more from the Fantasy Football Power Hour with Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com and myself, Dan Satora, inside a wake-up call, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub and the Pennant Trophy Center. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Consistency is, well, consistently hard to find. Unless you head to 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, the home of the Penn and Trophy Center, who has been serving us central and upstate New Yorkers, as well as beyond, for decades. The Penn and Trophy Center on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, gives you an amazing and unique way to customize a memory today. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. Be it an Employee of the Month award, a sports award, something for your business, engraving for your family, your loved ones, anniversaries, birthday parties, and so much more, including remembering somebody who served in the military. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. The definition of consistency is Penn and Trophy. Browse their products on penandtrophy.com. That's penandtrophy.com. And call them for more information at 315-422-8797. That's 315-422-8797. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue, in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash DT. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Under promise, over deliver. That's the way you got to do it. 
you do what you got to do, you do everything that you can do, and then you do a little bit more. And with that being said, we have our past 11 o'clock. I think we've done this every single week, but that's because we want to prepare you and make sure you're ready for the season at hand, your daily fantasy, your fantasy leagues, now your fantasy playoffs, and your hope for the championship. Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com and myself, Dan Tortora, always here to help you and do what we can for you. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate you being with us, and we appreciate you listening, not just on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT live, but also when we are archived on Stitcher Radio as well as Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean. And so much more. Tune in radio as well. So we thank you for tuning in and being a part of the broadcast. And we say we uh, give our appreciation and our thanks for you all the time. So much to you for that. Much uh, much thanks to you for that. Can't thank you enough. With that being said, we're into our next game here. And that is the Bills of the Patriots. Mike, what do you have for this one? Yeah, well, I think everybody knows I'm going to go with the evil empire here in New England Patriots. But... You know, there is some interesting questions in this game, and the questions to me are on the Patriots' side of the ball, and are we seeing the beginning of the end? Are they not going to get a home field advantage? Are they not going to get a first-round bye? It doesn't look that way. There's there's a bunch of questions out. You know, they can still clinch the title with the win, but that's the AFC East title. It doesn't mean anything yet. They want to win the whole AFC championship. They may have to go on the road a bit to do that, but... Tom Brady's been good. He's been great. He's been a solid quarterback, but he hasn't been Tom Brady-like. And he's still not Tom Brady-like, coming in at number 10 on my rankings. And I think part of the reason for that is Gronk. Gronk hasn't been very Gronk-like. You know, I still got to give Gronk some props when he steps on the field, but he's no longer that one or two option. When I mean one or two, the number one or number two guy on my ranking. He's number six on my ranking because I think it's awful generous on my part. Josh Gordon not being available is, is going to put a damper on some things as far as a deep threat. But, you know, you may see somebody, you know, come out of nowhere. You may see somebody that, you know, makes something happen. The guy who normally makes something happen every game is Julian Edelman. Every time he takes the field, he's definitely a wide receiver one, just based on the volume and how they use him, especially in the slot. He's awesome. Maybe we're going to see somebody step up in the absence of Josh Gordon. Maybe it's going to be a Cordero Patterson or a Chris Hogan. You know, it'd be interesting, but I think one of those guys is an emergency type situation or maybe a, a quick daily uh, flyer for you if, if you're looking to, to make a wild pick there and possibly win some big time money. On the other side of the ball, I, I don't think you, there's much value anywhere. And when I mean anywhere, I mean anywhere. Josh, Josh Allen, number 18 quarterback on my rankings. LaShawn McCoy's in the 40s. You know, as far as any receiver for the Bills, I, I just really don't see it. Maybe a Robert Foster who's been playing, you know, a lot better than anyone else on the team, so it seems. But even he's a number 49 wide receiver on my rankings this week, and I just really don't see anything from the tight end position. I'm going to go for the New England Patriots big in this game. I know they usually play these games close, but it's in New England, and this is when New England turns it up usually, so I'm going New England big in this game. New England needs this game. New England needs to save face. Do I think the Bills could pull off an upset? Probably, because that's how some of the games go every season, and they've gone this season too. But I'm going to pick the Patriots to win. On the Buffalo Bills side of things, nobody feels good about what's out there. Marcus Murphy is supposed to step it up. He's on IR. Tywan Jones on IR. LaShawn McCoy, Chris Ivory. Everybody's injured. So who feels good at wide receiver, running back? Nobody. Who do I like about nobody? Literally nobody in Buffalo. You want to take a chance on Robert Foster as A. Jones, maybe. Wide receiver fours and fives, maybe. But I don't feel good about anything in Buffalo. Outside of the fact that Josh Allen can run the ball, and I think he might I think he's got the chance of being a really, really good quarterback in their history. The Patriots, Tom Brady. Sony Michelle, James White, Julian Edelman, now Chris Hogan, Rob Gronkowski. Play them all. I don't think Rob is what he used to be. I feel better about Julian, Sony, James White, potentially Chris Hogan than I do of Gronk. 
but he is there. And if you're in your playoffs or your daily fantasy, whatever it may be, you don't want to leave him off and have him have a big day. He is playing Buffalo. So this may be a low-scoring game. This might be a 13-10 to 10 game, but a lot of players feel good in this one as far as fantasy value goes, and, and we're both going with the Patriots, like we said. Packers at the Jets. Mike, what do you have for this? Yeah, the one guy that you know I'm always anxious to watch is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the number three quarterback on the rankings this week. Well, not so much on the other side. Sam interception King Darnold is, you know, going to be taking the field. But, you know, he's a young player. It is what it is. But you obviously can't play him number 27 quarterback on my rankings. Jamal Williams is going to step up. Aaron Jones going on IR with the knee. So Jamal Williams is the surprise guy, but not really. You know, when he does get the opportunities, he's going to score for you. you just got to know what you're getting. You're not getting Aaron Jones' production. You're getting Jamal Williams' production. And Jamal Williams' production this week is going to be number 24 on the rankings. I have the Jets running back, and Elijah McGuire ranked higher than him at number 18 this week. And wide receiver-wise, you know, maybe Devontae Adams is the best option on the field. I got him number one overall as far as wide receivers go. But, you know, I'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that even comes close to being able to to, to warrant a spot on my roster, let alone a spot on the field this week. Maybe a Robbie Anderson coming in at number 24 on my rankings just because of volume because they're going to have to throw the ball. I think they're going to be behind the Jets are in this game. And, you know, again, at, at, at tight end, I'm not sure there's a startable option outside of maybe a Chris Herndon who comes in at number 17 on my ranking for the Jets. Uh, I, I don't see anything miraculous happen in this game. I don't see the blowout one side or the other, but I'm going to have to go with the team with the better quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, and I'm going to take Green Bay to win this game. Isn't it weird that this feels like this should be like a chip shot for the Packers right before the playoffs, and that this should be you know a game where they just route them 41 to 13? Yet it doesn't feel like that. I mean, isn't that strange for you, Mike? Yeah, I. I the dynamic is, is something else. You know, this time of the year, you're not used to, you know, seeing Aaron Rodgers and wonder if they're going to put him on a clock so he doesn't get hurt. You know, they're, they're usually, you know, keep contending for playoff position or home field advantage or something. But, uh, yeah, it is weird to say they're in the same conversation as the Jets at 5, 6, and 1 versus 4 and 10. Yeah, it's kind of gross. And it, it kind of makes you think that the Jets could win this one at times too, which is – very strange because how could the Jets possibly beat the mighty Packers? But the Packers have beaten themselves more than anybody else, and that's why we stand where we stand right now. So, on the Packers side of things, you got to play Aaron Rodgers. You would like to think that he could do it. Capri Bibbs got moved over from the Skins. He was on waivers of this month in December and just shifted over, so Capri Bibbs could get some action for the Green Bay Packers if Jamal Williams can't get it done. Uh, both of these guys are flex players. Both of these guys are last-minute substitutions type of thing. Devontae Adams is worth the play in this game. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is a wide receiver three, a low-end one. And, I mean, you should, you could look at other people because of the fact that they're playing the Jets. You could look at Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Randall Cobb because they're playing the Jets. Alan Lazard, who is picked up by the Jaguars, he just got moved over here in December to the Packers as well. Uh, he's all the way down on the depth chart, depth chart, just giving you some information. But I would say Devontae Adams clearly, Randall Cobb second, then Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I don't like the tight ends on Green Bay. I don't feel like there's enough action. And Jimmy Graham has underwhelmed me since he left Drew Brees. On the other side of it for the Jets, really nothing. D'Angelo Henderson, Coastal Carolina, Trenton Cannon coming out of Virginia State, Elijah McGuire from Louisiana Lafayette. All young guys, none of them really feel good. Quincy Inunua, he's been hurt, so Robbie Anderson could jump up here a little bit. But Robbie Anderson's a wide receiver three, in my in my opinion. And Chris Herndon, low end, uh, probably a high end tight end two, I would say for the Jets. I'm picking the Packers to win this game. Not a ton of fantasy things that make you feel great in this matchup. You would like to think that Aaron Rodgers and in Devontae Adams will put on a clinic, but the way the Packers have been playing, this game could come down to the wire and the Jets could win it for all we know. Texans at the Eagles. What do you have for this, Mike? Yeah, there's 
going to be some uh, interesting dynamic as far as a quarterback play. We're going to see the resurgence of Nick Foles again, but Nick Foles is going up against somebody you can get after the quarterback in the Houston Texans defense, which makes their secondary pretty solid as well. You know, Deshaun Watson's going to be the guy as far as the quarterbacks to watch in this game. Number seven on my rankings. Uh, you know, I think the Philly uh, secondary is banged up a bit. I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to have a feast. He's a number two wide receiver on my rankings this week. And Houston lacks that dynamic tight end, though. They The closest thing they have is a Jordan Thomas, who comes in at number 29 on my ranking. But what they do have is a solid running back who's having a bad year. I say bad year overall because he's been inconsistent. There's been times where he's just quite frankly let you down. Like as in last week, if you were looking to get out of the semis and into the championship. But, you know, if you keep it in perspective and understand where he is, if you have better options, great. But if you don't, well, you're probably not playing for your championship. And Lamar Miller checking in at number 22 on my rankings this week. And for Philly, running the ball, I, I don't know if I can count on a Josh Adams. Darren Sproles looks better, but I think he's taken away from Josh Adams. So maybe one of those guys in a flex-type situation. Tight end knows where it's at. Zach Ertz, number two tight end on my ranking. That's who they're going to be throwing the ball to. That's their number one guy in reality. That's the guy that kind of makes the parts of this thing move. And Dallas Godert has, has been stepping up as well as a number two tight end. So I think there's going to be some action in this game, some fantasy points. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with the home team and the Eagles to win this game. I know I'm putting it out there. I know I like the Texans better as a team. I know the Texans have the better record, but I'm gonna go with the home field team and the Eagles here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in this one a little bit different than you, Mike. I'm actually gonna go with the Texans in this, and you know the 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 reality of it all is the Texans are in a position right now, believe it or not. Where they, if if the season ended today, the Houston Texans would have not only won the AFC South, but they will have the second seed in the AFC behind only the Kansas City Chiefs, and they would have a first round buy and home field advantage unless they play Kansas City throughout the AFC playoffs, which would be insane. The Houston Texans are a good team right now, and that's why I'm picking Houston to win. Deshaun Watson, not a bad play in this game. He's, to me, he's a, he's a mid-range guy. You know, he could be a one or a two at quarterback, but you know, he is worth the thought. Depending on what you have, if you have him and Baker Mayfield, I like him a little bit more than Baker. If you have him and Philip Rivers, then I'm leaning on Philip maybe a little bit more this this week. And he might be on the line with Baker Mayfield because Baker's playing Cincinnati. So I might have to rescind my last statement and say they might be a little bit closer. But Deshaun Watson, not a bad play for you. Lamar Miller and Alfred Blue aren't bad, but they're both flexes to me because Lamar is not consistent. And Alfred Blue's come on as of late, so he might get maybe more of those opportunities to score. He's not a bad one to put on your team if you could put three or four running backs out there. DeAndre Hopkins, to me, is worth the play if he can stay healthy here. He is in a situation right now where he is questionable for the game, so just make sure you monitor him. He is questionable with an ankle injury, and outside of that for injuries, really nothing for you, except for Lamar Miller also has an ankle injury at running back. For Philadelphia on their side, we have Zach Ertz, ankle injury is left of questionable. Elshon Jeffrey, illness is questionable to play as well in the game. And I want to make a note of this, Mike, and I don't know if you know this, Mr. Sofka, but I think you'll appreciate it. There's there's a guy that wants to come on the show to talk about playing in the NFL. Hey guys, I'm I'm so happy to be back in to to be playing in sports again. And uh just means the world to me. And uh you know, yeah, I was I was a boxer, so you know, getting a concussion or two is something that I'm, I'm so used to. And, you know, being on the concussion protocol right now this week with the Houston Texans, I'm so happy to be back. Mike Tyson, once again, uh, playing DB for the Houston Texans. Did you know that Mike Tyson was back in the NFL? Did you know that he was in the NFL? No, and that's the worst impression you do, Dan. (laughs) I'm very tired this morning, so I couldn't couldn't really. I just did the lisp. That's all I did this morning. I'm exhausted. You know, the course line guy. So, you know, that's uh that's it. That's that's where I'm at right now. But Mike Tyson, concussion, D B for Houston. I had to make a mention of it. Thank you so much for being rude to me this morning, Mike. Sofka. 
So with that being said, let's get into who I want to play in this. So Deshaun Watson, you know, kind of a, a one or a two, depending on who you have out there at, at quarterback. DeAndre Hopkins is worth the play. Uh, Alfred Blue, like I said, maybe a flex guy for you. On the other side of it for the Eagles, Nick Foles, He's a quarterback, too. I don't really feel good about him in this game. Josh Adams, Darren Sproles, I don't feel good about either one of them unless you got to dig really deep. Alshon Jeffrey, just monitor him because of his injury, but he is worth the play. He is their number one guy. Golden Tate, not a bad move for you as well in this one if you got to dig deep or maybe find somebody in free agency or on waiver wires. But Alshon Jeffrey feels the best for the Eagles. I'm going to go with the Texans in this one. The next game up is the Falcons at the Panthers. The Panthers playing without Cam Newton, as they know that they are out of things right now. So what do you have for this, Mike? Yeah, I don't think Taylor Heineke is the answer, but, you know, that's who they got. He can throw the ball. He's got a strong arm. He is athletic, but he's not Cam Newton. He's the number 23 quarterback on my ranking. The only reason why he ranks that high is Atlanta's got the injury woes, especially in their secondary on the defense. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna stay away from that whole situation there if I can. Matt Ryan though should have a field day. He's gonna be number four quarterback on my rankings this week. CMC, Christian McCaffrey getting it done, especially in a PPR format. Number three running back on my rankings. And you know, on the other side of the ball, I'm 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 really not sure that Tevin Coleman's been the answer. Well, he needs to be the answer because Devontae Freeman's not coming back after all, but he's the number 18 running back on my rankings. Julio Jones, Julio Jones, number four receiver on the rankings this week. And, you know, on the other side of the ball, I'm not sure you can start a number one guy because of the quarterback situation. But if if you are, it's DJ Moore. He comes in at number 25 on my rankings. Usually there's a, a a great tight end on one side or both sides. This this time they're they're okay tight ends. They're good tight ends. Austin Hooper coming in at number ten on my ranking, and Ian Thomas filling in for Greg Olson, doing a bang up job for worry for what's going on there. Number fourteen on my ranking this week. You know, I, this is an interesting game because well, both teams are kind of middle of the road. There's going to be some coaching changes or possible implications from this game. So, I, you know what, I'm going to give the game to the Falcons simply because Cam Newton is not going to be playing and Taylor Heineke is going to be the the, rece- the uh, quarterback for the Panthers, and I don't feel good about that even though the game's in Carolina. So, again, I'm going with the Falcons. You know, and I, I did it for the same reason that you did it. You know, the reason why I picked the Falcons over the Panthers is the fact that, you know, there is no Cam Newton. If it is, it would be a different story. Matt Ryan in this game, low-end quarterback one, not a bad play. Tevin Coleman – not bad for you as well. You know, he's got Brian Hill and Jeremy Langford behind that because Ito Smith is now on IR and so is Devontae Freeman. So Tevin Coleman has to be the guy, which means that they have to give him the ball, which uh, for you and the positivity for you, for those that have him, could pay off some dividends for you. Austin Hooper's got a knee injury. He's questionable to play in the game. Julio Jones with a hip injury is questionable, did not practice on Wednesday. So as far as that goes, if Julio Jones is good to go, he's worth to play. Calvin Ridley is a sneaky wide receiver three to put out there. So Matt Ryan's Kevin Coleman, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, uh, Austin Hooper. If Austin Hooper can play, he's worth taking a look at. But this game, I think maybe I leave him off on this one. My gut feelings tell me not going to be a good game for him, but the other guys feel good in Atlanta. Christian McCaffrey, he's obviously the guy to play in this. Taylor Heineke, it'll be interesting to see who his wide receiver is. Every quarterback has their guy. I tell you this all the time, but the reality is look at the numbers, be smart, and pay attention. So Devin Funches could end up having a big day for this, so maybe he's a flex guy for you. Maybe DJ Moore's a flex guy for you in this, but ultimately the one I feel good about telling you to play, the only one I do of Carolina, is Mr. Christian McCaffrey, Mr. Stanford himself. So I'm picking the Falcons to win the game, though. Rams at the Cardinals, Mike, what do you have for this? Well, there's been some talking speculation about Todd Gurley. They went out and signed C.J. Anderson, and, of course, they have John Kelly on us. Just relax, everybody. You know, if you have Gurley, you're probably in your championship. He's going to play. They're going to play him. Just relax. Everything's going to be okay. Come back down off the ledge. The Rams are looking to clinch a first-round buy, so they're looking to win this game. You know, the, the game's at, what, Arizona? So, I mean, come on. 
they're going to win this game. I'm going to take the Rams to win. I'm going to stand behind Todd Gurley, but just watch the injury report the rest of the week here. But Todd Gurley, number one running back on my rankings. And David Johnson, a number one running back, number 10 on my rankings for the Arizona Cardinals. The big difference has been the play of Jared Goff. He's been on a slide recently, but Arizona's just been horrible. So I'm going to still say Jared Goff is worthy of a QB1, low-end QB1, coming in at number nine on the rankings. Not so much with Josh Rosen, especially facing that awesome defense of the Rams that can not only pressure the quarterback, play the middle of the field, and play the deep field with outstanding corner play as well. All led off by that outstanding pass rush and the ability to stop the run with Aaron Donald. So, you know, they got a good defense with the Rams. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the other side of the ball here. I don't see Larry Fitzgerald really doing much in this game. I, I don't see the, the, the type of productivity you would need anywhere from the Cardinals. Productivity is going to be the key, though, for Robert Woods, number nine wide receiver on my rankings this week. I think you're going to get some production out of him. I don't think tight end on either side of the ball, you're going to get any any points at all worth anything, not even a, in a daily league. So, again, I'm going to go with the Rams to win this game and take a deep breath. I think Gurley's going to play. Yeah, I mean, obviously monitor Todd Gurley and see where he's at. He's got a knee injury. He didn't practice on Wednesday. But like Mike said, you're fighting for – your spot in the playoffs, you're fighting for where you're going to be at. You want to hold on to that bye. You're behind the New Orleans Saints, who are 12 and two. You're 11 and three. The Bears are 10 and four. You want to get this game and you want to take care of business, and then maybe you want to rest a guy or two. So just watch it. But I think Jared Goff's worth the play. I think Todd Gurley's worth the play. Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods are worth the play. Josh Reynolds, look at him as maybe a flex guy. Tyler Higby maybe as a extra tight end, a tight end too for you, or you know flex out a tight end if you if you don't feel good about anybody else on the roster. On the other side, you I want to tell you David Johnson, but it's been a really crappy year for David Johnson. I mean, he should be a top three running back. He's not anywhere close right now. So you know I think he is worth the play for you. But he's, uh, he's a lower-end running back, too, for me, uh, for namesake, really. And I don't feel good about any of the receivers out there for Arizona. I'm picking the Rams to win this game. Next one we got up, Mike, is the Bears at the Niners. What do you have for this? Yeah, don't sleep on the Niners in this game. The Niners came up and picked somebody last week, and they could do it again. Chicago going to San Fran. I am going to take Chicago, though. I am going to go with the better quarterback. I am going to go with the better situation, the better defense. Mitch Trubisky coming in at number 12 as a quarterback of the Bears. So, you know, there's a bottom end quarterback one production from you. And, you know, it, it is possible you have Trubisky on your team. He's put up some solid points. And it's possible you're in a championship because of him, especially in those middle weeks where he scored a bunch of points. Maybe he catapulted you to a better playoff position or playoff seat. You know, on the other side of the ball, you can't really say that same thing about Nick Mullins. He's been doing a pedestrian job. He's been getting things done. But at the same time, he's not Mitch Trubisky, and he's not any higher than that. He's definitely number 26 quarterback against that massive rush with Khalil Mack and the great defensive pressure that the Bears put on you. On the other side of the ball here, actually on the running side of the ball here, Matt Breda is going to get the touches. He's going to get the opportunities. Number 12 running back on my rankings this week. Uh, Tariq Cohen might be the, the, the best running back as far as the Bears go. Number 16 on my rankings this week. And when you're looking at wide receivers, I really don't think you can play any of these guys right now from San Fran, a, a Goodwin, a Pettis, a, a Bourne, a Taylor, a Richie James. I like this guy for the future. Keep an eye on this guy. Returning kicks. The guy's just explosive. He's fast. They're going to try to find ways to get him on the field. Maybe they get him on the field now, but the guy they like on the field a lot is George Kittle. Number four tight end on my rankings. George Kittle, been solid. Pro Bowl guy. He's the guy that I think that, you know, is is, is the driving force behind San Fran. He's the guy that seems to, to get things done, pull them out get big third downs, get touchdowns, get red zone looks. So I don't need to tell you, and you probably have him on your roster if you're in the playoffs or in the championship game this week. But on the other side of the ball, Trey Burton was getting it done. But, you know, it looks like he's going to be dinged up a little bit. But if he does play, he's number 16 tight end on my ranking this week. And, 
you know, as far as the Chicago receivers go, I, again, it's a mixed bag of tricks there. I don't like, I, I, I don't like when, I, you know, the best case scenario is a guy who maybe I could play at wide receiver three or flex, so I'm going to stay away. But again, I look for the Bears to go to San Fran and win, but don't sleep on San Fran. Yeah, you know, San Francisco is one of those teams that, you know, what did somebody say? They can't they can't seem to lose when they need to. So, you know, San Fran's in a position right now where they, like Denver, play spoiler, and then they do really bad, and they make no sense. I mean, Denver's, you would like to think Denver's better because they look like they were contending at certain points, but then just losing. But Denver and San Fran just seem to be those teams that you're like, what the hell's going to happen? It doesn't matter who they play. So it's it's interesting every single week. I do think the Bears are going to get it, as Mike said. And, uh, you know, Mike, you know, not only Mike Sofka, but Mike Tyson. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do that randomly just to just to get at you because of what you said, Mr. Sofka. But Deion Sims is uh, on injured reserve. There's really nobody else to be worried about with Chicago. On the other side of it, for San Francisco, they have... A bunch of defensive players, but outside of that, Matt Breda, his ankle injury has left him questionable, which opens up the door to to others. We'll talk about that in a second. Chicago in this game, Mitch Trubisky, low-end quarterback one. Not a bad play for you, depending on who you have. He's playing San Fran. Tariq Cohen over Jordan Howard, but both of them could be plays for you. I like Tariq Cohen very much so. Uh, Taquan Mizell out of Virginia is playing running back now, and he's behind both of those guys. Just want to make a no- mention of him and a shout-out to him. But uh, Tariq Cohen, definitely worth the play for you. I put him up in my starters and just kind of locked him up there and locked away and, you know, threw away the key, so to speak. Taylor Gabriel at wide receiver. Trey Burton at tight end for Chicago. Like them both. For San Fran, Nick Mullins isn't doing a bad job. Uh, Jeff Wilson, who is behind Matt Breda, is a sneaky pick for you at flex running back three, something like that this week. Outside of that, you know, I'm not really sold on any of their wide receivers. I guess if I had to choose... What right wide receiver I'd throw out there for you, just to give you a name here, is that you know you could potentially look to Dante Pettis or you know Garrett Selleck or George Kittle. You know Garrett Selleck and George Kittle are both getting opportunities wide receiver and tight end wise. Kittle I think is still worth the play. Dante Pettis not a bad play out there for you, but ultimately I don't feel great about any of the wide receivers for the Niners. I'm going with the Bears. We'll take a step aside. We'll come back with a trio of final games in the Fantasy Football Power Hours in just a moment. This is a wake-up call fast break. Consistency is, well, consistently hard to find. Unless you head to 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, the home of the Penn and Trophy Center, who has been serving us Central and Upstate New Yorkers, as well as beyond, for decades. The Penn and Trophy Center on 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York, gives you an amazing and unique way to customize a memory today. Say it with the Penn and Trophy Center. Be it an Employee of the Month award, a sports award, something for your business, engraving for your family, your loved ones, anniversaries, birthday parties, and so much more, including remembering somebody who served in the military. Say it with the Pendant Trophy Center. 119 East 2nd Street in East Syracuse, New York. The definition of consistency is pen and trophy. Browse their products on penandtrophy.com. That's penandtrophy.com. And call them for more information at 315-422-8797. That's 315-422-8797. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue, in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 
487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Under promise, over deliver. That's what we do here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We are here with you, and, and by stating that fact, we're here with you past 1130 to give you all that you need in your fantasy football advice for Week 16. Whether you're playing daily fantasy or you're in the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Challenge, which why wouldn't you be, in the Floridian League as well as the four leagues in Central New York that are at the Wildcat Sports Pub, whose trophies are presented in all five leagues by the Penn and Trophy Center. So very excited about more life here for a bunch of my teams inside of the Wake Up Call Fantasy Football Challenge, and I hope that you are alive in it as well. Mike and I are alive and well, thank God. Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com and myself, Dan Satora of Wake Up Call DT.com to be here and give you this information. God is good, and we are here to give you that trio of games to round out today's broadcast. Those games in Week 16 start off with the Steelers at the Saints. Mike, what do you have for this? Yeah, I like this game a lot. I'm real anxious to see this game because it's going to be a ton of fantasy points. You know, even though Eli Apple has shored up that Saints defense, they're they're picking on him. Opposing teams are picking on him. So fantasy wise, you know, if you're in a you know IDP league, he's an excellent guy because there's going to be a lot of activity on his side of the field. But you know, I think the Saints are still relatively soft in that secondary. They can't pressure the quarterback. They got improved uh, linebacker play with Anzalone. Uh, but I, I, I just think that this is going to be more of a back-and-forth shootout type kind of game. So I'm real excited about it. I am going to go with the home team and the Saints to win this. You know, they're going to be on that fast track there and, uh, you know, on the turf, and that's what they're used to playing on. And Drew Brees plays out of his mind at home. And, you know, it, it, his Steelers have been struggling at times this year. But, you know, if you're looking at the rankings, Ben Roethlisberger is going to tear it up. He's going to have to really air it out to catch up to Drew Brees and the Saints. So Ben Roethlisberger, number two quarterback on my rankings, where Drew Brees is number eight. So you can't go wrong either way there. You're probably playing in the playoffs or championship if you have one of those guys at the helm, that's for sure. Running back-wise, you know, James Conner is probably going to make the make it. He, he's been dinged up, but he's the number seven running back on my rankings. And the big snub, in my opinion, Alvin Kamara, not the Pro Bowl guy, number five running back. And then, of course, I got Mark Ingram as well coming in at number 25 on my rankings this week. Wide receivers where all the money's at in this game. Michael Thomas, number five. Antonio Brown, number six, and Juju Smith-Schuster, number seven on my rankings. All right there. Boom, boom, boom. Can you imagine if you have that trio? That would be phenomenal. I don't know how that would be possible with Michael Thomas and Antonio Brown, but definitely with a Juju Smith-Schuster, maybe you have a two out of three. You're probably going to win this week. And looking at tight end, it looks like the guy I really like the best out of every, out of the tight ends that are going to be on the field in this game is Vance McDonald, number nine tight end on my ranking. He seems to always get a big truck or a big hit or something big, but sometimes it's been it's been the moon or nothing. So you know he he may have a big game, but I you know I I, I don't know. You can't guarantee that. Hope we have a better option, but there's a lot worse options. We'll leave it at that. So again, I like New Orleans at home in this game with a ton of fantasy points on both sides. Yeah, I'm picking New Orleans in this matchup as well. I definitely think that there's going to be a lot of fantasy on both sides of this. This could be a Super Bowl if the Steelers were playing better. They're not playing bad, but the Saints are on a mission. And when we look at this game and we look at where things are at on both sides of it, you know, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm going to echo Mike's sentiments of, you know, playing a lot of different guys. Ben Roethlisberger is worth the play. So look at the injury report for Pittsburgh really quick here just to give you an update because this is important as they get closer and closer to the game. James Conner's ankle injury did not practice on Wednesday. He's questionable to play in the game. Obviously, if they hope to make the playoffs, they don't want to lose him, making even less of a case for Le'Veon Bell in the situation of James Conner has success, Jalen Samuels, who I covered in college, he had success behind Pittsburgh's offensive line. Their offensive line, 
I voted for a bunch of them to go to the Pro Bowl. They have representation in the Pro Bowl. So the reality of it all is this offensive line is good, and the talent on Pittsburgh is fine without Le'Veon Bell. He rolled the dice and said, hey, guess what? I'm the best fo- I'm the best girl you'll ever bring to the ball. And then Pittsburgh said, no, we'll find another date. Ben Roethlisberger worth the play. If Connor's good to go, he's worth the play. If he's not, then Jalen Samuels is worth the play. Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, Vance McDonald over Jesse James. And Jesse James, if you got to play them both, if you have them both, or if you got to you know, pick up a tight end last second, Jesse's not a bad one, but I like Vance McDonald more. Uh, Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, all worth the plays in this. Michael Thomas as well. And Traquan Smith, a flex player for you for the New Orleans Saints. I'm picking the Saints to win. Chiefs at the Seahawks, Mike, Sunday night football. What do you got? Yeah, I would really like to pick the home team here in the Seahawks, and I think there's a possibility they're going to try to take a chapter out of the Baltimore Ravens book and try to run the ball and keep Pat Mahomes and company on the sidelines and then control the game with defense. I just don't see the talent on the Seattle side of the ball defensively to be able to keep up with the offense of the Chiefs, even without a Kareem Hunt. Look, Pat Mahomes is the number one fantasy quarterback. He's been that way most all of the year. You know that. You're probably in the Super Bowl in your league because of that. So you definitely go Pat Mahomes. Russell Wilson, well, he's been getting it done. He's been having a pretty good year by stat standards. But, you know, he's a middle-of-the-road guy, even up against the soft Kansas City defense, which I think is improving. Russell Wilson coming in at this number 13-ranked quarterback on my rankings. You know, I'm looking at the running back situation here, and I like Chris Carson a lot. I think he's an excellent running back. Number 14 on my rankings this week, but... You know, uh, on the other side of the ball here with Kansas City, it, it begs the question, is it Damian Williams? Is it Spencer Ware? I think it is Damian Williams, especially in a PPR format, but no more than a running back three or a flex position. So make sure you know that going in. I'm sure you know that by now if you're still alive in your fantasy league. And, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill, fastest guy in the NFL, number three wide receiver on my rankings this week. And, you know, I'm looking on the other side. I don't think I can count on a Doug Baldwin. Maybe I can as the number 23 receiver this week. And Tyler Lockett right there with him at number 22 on my rankings. And as far as uh, tight ends go, we all know who the number one tight end is in fantasy football. It's Travis Kelsey. He's the number one tight end this week against Seattle. And, you know, ever since Seattle got rid of Jimmy Graham, I, I, I don't think they have that guy. I don't think they have that real number one tight end they're trying to force Nick Bennett into that role it just hasn't flourished yet so I think definitely that uh, Kansas City is going to win this game although I'm not going to sleep on the Seahawks here they're capable of winning this game with the 12th man at home but for the record I'm taking the Chiefs yeah you know I I think that this game is gonna it could go either way because the Seattle Seahawks have been so strong at home and they've been able to take care of business but you would like to think that the Chiefs are going to be able to edge out the Seahawks in this one. I think the game could go either way. I am going to pick the Chiefs in the matchup, though, and we'll start with Kansas City and work our way over to Seattle on my side of things here. Kansas City, first and foremost, Pat Mahomes is worth the play. Damian Williams is worth you know, a running back three, give him an opportunity and whatnot. Uh, Tyreek Hill is worth the play, as well as Travis Kelsey on Kansas City side. For Seattle, Russell Wilson, high-end quarterback two. Has it done the greatest as of late? Tyler Lockett is also worth the play. Nick Vanette, not a bad tight end to put out there. Chris Carson, potentially, but I consider him a running back three or four in this matchup. I don't feel great about Chris Carson, but I think this is going to be a good game. I think the game will probably be in the 20s, and I'm going to lean on the Chiefs. Broncos at Raiders, the final Monday night football game of the season. What do you have for this, Mike? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think that there's um, some opportunity for some fantasy points here. You just got to, you know, keep it in perspective across the board here. You know, I think both quarterbacks are eerily similar. Uh, number 20 and 21 ranking this week I'm on my board. Derek Carr and Case Keenum, neither one of them wowing me, but sometimes doing just enough to get it done. And with deficiencies all around them and losing players all around them, I'll tell you the one guy that hasn't been lost is Philip Lindsay. He's been found 
undrafted guy from Colorado comes in. He's explosive. Number 11 running back against Oakland this week. I really like him a lot. I think you're going to you're going to continue to win if he's on your roster this week. And I'm looking at the running back situation on the other side. The best they have is a Doug Martin, 26 on my ranking this week. But the guy I like a lot this week, the guy that's a daily fantasy gem, Deshaun Hamilton. I think I think he's going to explode this week. It looks like he's going to have a lot of extra opportunities. Emmanuel Sanders dinged up a bit. And, you know, on the other side of the ball, I, I, I'd like to say I can find somebody but I can't. I'm, I'm having a hard time here, so I'm just going to bash on the open receivers and just tell you that, you know, tight end-wise, Jared Cook is the guy. He's the receiver. He just happens to play tight end. He's the number five tight end on my ranking this week. And for Denver, maybe a Matt Lacoste coming in at number 19 on my tight end board this week. I'm going to have to go with a pick in this game. I don't even want to pick either one of these teams, even though it's in Oakland. I'm going to go with the team that has the best player on the field, and I think that's Philip Lindsay, and I'm going to go with the Broncos. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Broncos as well in this matchup. I just feel like, you know, again, they're that team that they win, they lose, they make no sense, but they do have talent. And Philip Lindsay, undrafted free agent out of Colorado 2018 NFL draft. Wow. So Philip Lindsay, put them out there, show them some love. Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Hamilton, because they're playing the Raiders, are not bad. Let, you know, wide receiver threes for you or flex guys for you. On the other side of it with Oakland, Jared Cook, cut and paste. That's what I say every week. There's nobody else. So, so Jared Cook, I'm going to go with the Broncos to win this one. So, once again, Mike and I have gone with the Titans in game one. I went with the Ravens. He went with the Chargers. Both went with the Browns, both Cowboys, both Vikings, Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, Packers, I went Texans, he went Eagles, Falcons, Rams, Bears, Saints, Chiefs, and Broncos. So there's only a few games we disagreed on, Mike. That's the Ravens at the Chargers as well as the Texans at the Eagles that we have not gone snake eyes on. Outside of that, you and I are together on every other game this week. So we'll see how things pan out. Either both of us are geniuses or both of us have some work to do. As always, Mr. Soft Guy, thank you. Merry Christmas and a happy holidays, and God bless, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Yeah, you too, Dan. Merry Christmas, and we'll talk soon. Take care. That coming from Mike Sofka. One more time, Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora here on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast and for hanging out with us here this morning. We appreciate you. We love you. And we look forward to talking with you soon. Friday's show, the last show that we have before Christmas, is going to be the Annoying Moment of the Week, proudly presented by Carvel DeWitt, which has amazingly awesome. Check out our social media, at Wake Up Call DT on Facebook, at Wake Up Call underscore DT on Instagram, at Call DT on Twitter. Check out these cakes, the Grinch Cakes are awesome. There's the Big Grinch Cake, there's the Small Grinch, there's the Big Santa, there's the Small Santa. There's Cookie Puss, there's Fudgy the Whale, there's all the things that you love, and then there's all of these awesome new creations. And then there's the mini cupcake ice cream cake looking ones with, you know, the the little Frosty the Snowman and, and all those cool things. So Carvel DeWitt bringing you the annoying moment of the week this Friday and every Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by Significant Sound Bites at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I got a bunch of things going on with Significant Sound Bites this week. And then we'll get into... FML Friday morning live at 10 a.m. It'll carry us all the way through on video and audio to the end of the show. You can watch it on facebook.com backslash live now DT. And you can always listen to Wake Up Call with Dan Satora Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time on mixlr.com backslash wake up call DT. God bless you. Thank you. Happy Christmas and holiday shopping. Please be safe and please know it's not all about the gifts. Be good to each other, love one another, and be good to yourself. I'll talk with you in the morning on TGIF right here on the first day of winter coming up on December 21st. Shout out to all the companies that bless Wake Up Call with Dan Satora with their partnerships. I'm excited for my Christmas party and holiday party tonight, which is happening in appreciation and thanks to 
all the companies we're proud to work with, Carvel DeWitt, Dry Sig Apparel, Dry Sig Lady, Honda City of Liverpool, Utica Pizza Company, the Syracuse Stallions, the Wildcat Sports Pub, LJ Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson of Gilbo Realty, Canine Campground, Dog Boarding and Doggy Daycare, Press Room Pub, FanHands.com, Chick-fil-A Cicero, the Penn and Trophy Center, True by Hilton Camillus, and our newest addition, which we, 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 we will announce officially today on our social media. So God bless and thanks to all of you. We're happy to have the team that we have, and I want to thank everybody that comprises these teams, from Mark to Jay to Jimmer to Dan to Danny to Michelle and company to Tom and Chris and company to Lorraine to Ralph and George and Brad and Dennis to Mike and Jimmy, Phil, Charlie, LJ, everybody. Thank you so much for all that you do, and Joey as well. We appreciate you, we love you, and I thank you for being a part of my dreams and for helping me to help the community the way that I want to. So thank you so much for believing in me, and I look forward to having a great night with all of you tonight at the Dance Tour Broadcast Media Christmas party, holiday party. God bless, be well. We'll talk with you Friday morning.